Uh, another application, what we just made is something called a Polaroid. Now, it's a radio frequency Polaroid. And you probably aren't are more familiar with things like uh, Polaroids and polarized sunglasses, things like that, right? So it, there's another, you know, it's, it's a freak, there's a frequency effect going on again. But for visible light, what we can do is you have a piece of plastic, basically. And in order to make a, a visible light Polaroid, what you have instead of metal strips are uh, kind of thin needle-like molecules, basically uh, polymers, some sort of organic material that's kind of just a chain of molecules or chain of atoms in sort of a needle like orientation or needle like shape. And uh, you get these sort of needle like crystals and they're originally all in kind of random directions. Uh, but if you apply a large static electric field, so I'm pu I put these in the presence of a large static electric field. Well, we talked about induced dipoles, right? We know this is a review of chapter, early part of the, the course, right? We're going to create induced dipoles. We're going to get some amount of positive charge on one end, negative on the other, positive on this end, negative on the other, positive on this end, negative on the other, positive here, etc. And if these crystals are free to move about, then not only are we going to get polarization, but what, what would happen? Anybody know? What would happen? They would reorient, right? There's going to be a torque on these uh, polar now dipoles, these dipole molecules, because I have a positive charge here, and so that's going to exert an electric force in that direction on the positive end, but a negative uh, or a electric force in the opposite direction on the negative end, and these things will twist, right? And so you can get these things to all orient in the same direction. So we now have. And so we, get, so we get this to happen, and then we cool our material down, and so we basically lock in these molecules all lined up in the same direction. Okay? So let's say we have visible light. And I'm going to draw this kind of in perspective here. So here's a light bulb. Here's a light bulb. And the light is coming out towards us in the positive Z direction. So that's positive Z. And now light coming from an ordinary incandescent light bulb is unpolarized. We could have charges in the, in the filament accelerating in any direction possible. And so we could have light E rad oriented that way or that way or that way or that way. So along the plus or y direction or plus or minus y direction, along the plus or minus x direction, or anywhere in between, any, any superposition of those two directions, right? So unpolarized light comes in looking kind of like that. Then I place my Polaroid in the way. So here is the Polaroid screen. And my, the molecules in the Polaroid, the crystals are lined up in that direction. What am I going to see out here when, when the light comes through? The sideways. What happens to up and down? It cancels out, right? We get re-radiation along the direction of these, uh, these crystals. The charges for the visible light range, the charges can easily accelerate up and down the length of the molecules. They can't accelerate very well side to side. So we get re-radiation, which cancels out this original radiation in the plus or minus y direction. And so you end up with polarized light, polarized along the plus minus x direction. Okay? And you can see where our Polaroids go. It just looks not as bright. I mean, you can still see through it, but it's just not as bright because a lot of 50% of the light is being lost. Right? There's also some absorption going on, so there's more than that. But uh, in, in principle, half the light is being lost from this polarization. 
what if I did this? What if I had another Polaroid out in front, but only now I have the molecules oriented in that direction? What's going to come through? Nothing, right? Because I've already canceled out the uh, light that's polarized vertically. The only light left over is polarized horizontally. We've now got these uh, needle-like molecules lined up in that same direction. The re-radiation will be along the plus or minus x direction. So I should be able to cancel out everything out uh, on the other side of the Polaroid. So let's try it. And let me see if I can do this. Ah. So here we have an overhead. I'm going to put one screen on top. So that is polarized in one particular direction. I put another Polaroid on top that's polarized in the same direction, but if I rotate it 90 degrees, that's not too dramatic. So let's kill the lights. Try it again. Make sure I got it lined up correctly. One on top, two on top, rotate it, and there we go. Got the light canceled out completely. Okay.